Sugar is a chronic, dose-dependent hepatotoxin. Now, what, is that, what do I mean by that? Chronic. So, one sugar meal, not a problem. Two sugar meals, not a problem. But 10,000 sugar meals, that's a problem. And since every one of our meals is now spiked with added sugar, 10,000 sugar meals is 10 years. Now it's chronic. Dose-dependent, obviously. A little is okay, and that's what we used to get, but a lot is not, and that's what we get now. And the reason we get it is because all of our food now has added sugar, whereas that was not true previously. And finally, hepatotoxin, liver toxin. What happens to sugar when it's metabolized in the liver is it gets turned to liver fat. That liver fat has to be exported out of the liver. Our ability to do so is relatively inefficient. A lot of it ends up staying in the liver, causes liver dysfunction and liver disease, causes the pancreas to have to make extra insulin to make the liver do its job. That raises insulin levels all over the body. That drives energy into fat, contributing to obesity. Also, the liver disease contributes to problems with being able to process sugar. You now have diabetes. The high insulin causes uh, blood vessels to contract, now you have hypertension. In addition, heart disease, fatty liver, ultimately that high insulin can cause cell proliferation, now you've got cancer, and we now know that high insulin in the brain is part of the uh, pathogenesis of dementia. So is it toxic in high dose? Absolutely. In long term? Absolutely. Now how about addictive? It works on the reward center the same way that it works uh, that al alcohol works on the reward center. It basically tells your brain you want more. And so you have now a vicious cycle of consumption and disease. So sugar is both toxic and addictive when supplied in high dose. The low fat diet was a terrible mistake. I understand where it came from, but it was a terrible mistake. It was based on inappropriate precepts that were not well thought out. In the process of going low fat, the food tasted like cardboard. The food industry knew that. So what did they do? Add sugar. And then everything tastes good. Example, milk. I grew up on whole milk, and it was perfectly fine, and everybody was happy with it. Then we went to skim milk, and the kids wouldn't drink it in school. What do you do? Add the chocolate. So which was worse, the sugar or the fat? By far and away, the sugar. Big time. So. The low-fat diet basically became the high-sugar diet. And as we processed food with high sugar, we also took away the one antidote that we had in our diet for that sugar, and that was the fiber. And the reason is because you can't freeze fiber. So processed food is high sugar, low fiber. Real food is low sugar, high fiber. This is a processed food problem. Three words. Eat real food. Michael Pollan in the United States said, eat food, not too much, mostly plants. That's seven words. I'll make it simpler. Three words. Eat real food. If it has a nutrition facts label, it's been processed. Real food doesn't need a label. It's expensive, and that's a problem. But ultimately, government has to help us be able to eat real food by making it available and affordable.